Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What's your secret that could literally ruin your life if it came out? My dad told his kids that he was leaving an equal amount of money to each of us but he didn't, I got substantially more. Plot twist, he told each of you that you got more than the others. Lol that's the funniest shit ever that would actually keep siblings from fighting over money. Dayoshi underscore 87, while the will states that my fortune will be split equally, I have chosen to enclose an additional 30% to you. Literally do that for everyone so they all think they got more money and won't fight over the equal share, lol. That happened in my wife's family. The father was a surgeon with mental health issues. He created a very unequal will, especially to slight the daughter who had him committed, but all the siblings just divided the money equally. That's amazing. Sadly, they seem like such rare gems. But it's very uplifting to read. The father and or mother must have done something very right in raising them. I lied about my qualification for my current job. I also lied about graduating high school. My twin graduated but I didn't because I got expelled. The school closed down soon after so I just made a fake of her high school diploma and got into college that way. TV has taught me that this will inevitably lead to wacky hijinks when you are later found out by your colleagues and forced to return to finish high school at age 35. Or go to a community college to get your degree. Well, hopefully you can earn your college diploma before anyone finds out. I already finished and have a double associate's degree. I have a former boss that did me really dirty over and over again. He eventually threw me under the bus for a couple of mistakes he made and I lost my job when my wife was seven months pregnant. One day while driving to a family member's house I saw his very distinct truck parked in a driveway and realized that I discovered where he lives by accident. One weekday afternoon I walked through his yard and sprinkled about a half pound of kudzu seeds throughout, and I threw about ten bamboo shoots under his deck. This was about six years ago and the kudzu is all over his yard. I drive by his house occasionally. He's had to take down a large number of very large trees that have been choked out by the vines. That alone has probably cost him several thousand of dollars. Fuck that guy. I was expecting sugar in his gas tank. This is so much better. At first I thought about putting some kind of tracking device on his car so I could send friends of mine to fuck with him. Like if he was out to dinner with his GF send one of my female friends to the restaurant to pretend to be his jealous side chick. Maybe have a couple of friends tailgate him with their brights on occasionally. Like every couple of weeks throw a wrench in his day. If I told anybody that my dad cheats on my mom everyone I know would rain down hell on my parents for various reasons. Edit. To clear some things up, yes, my mom does know. I feel like if the secret gets out to others people will feel the need to blame my mom for whatever reason because my relatives and people I know are just like that. When I found this out about my father, I went to him and told him he would have to be honest with my mother or I'd tell her. It was tough to have that conversation, but if you don't, you may end up regretting it. Good luck. Asterisk edit. If you feel guilty, try not to. It wasn't your decision to cheat, and it's not your secret to keep. One of my best friends found out that his dad cheated on his mom for years. He told us when they made their divorce public the same time he learned the truth. Thing is, we, his friends, had figured it out years before. Like, why is he having a birthday party for his kid and the people there are his kid's friends, immediate family, and this one woman that nobody knows. That was a fun conversation. My uncle molested me constantly as a child. I told my mother, who got very angry. She said I was lying and was a terrible person for trying to split my family apart. My mother is a whole other can of worms. So he died when I was 16, and that made things easier for me, but no one knows. He's remembered fondly and often by his wife and kids at functions and dinners, and for 11 years now I just get quiet when he comes up. Telling people would only cause pain, and honestly wouldn't do me any good. No one knows but my boyfriend, and I carry the trauma with me everywhere. I probably should go to therapy, but between having two kids, working full-time, and being an adult student, I don't have time. So sorry this happened to you. I know that now with COVID a lot of therapists are doing Zoom sessions. Maybe you could try it and fit it into your schedule. It may really help to be able to talk about it to someone and get it all out with no judgments and a sympathetic, and unrelated, ear. Yeah. You deserve to live your best life and be happy. Don't let anyone or anything hold you back. 
I hope your uncle reincarnated as one of those little rats sold in pet shops and meant to be snake food. Edit, forgot to include but as many other commenters have posted. There are free resources through schools you can access for mental health. The cost is included in the tuition you pay. Please look into these programs. Take care of yourself and show yourself kindness. Just as school is an investment in your future so is your mental health and happiness. I have PTSD from my deployment in Afghanistan in 2009. That's not what would ruin my life. My friends, family, and co-workers know I have PTSD. What would ruin my life are the details. Only one person, excluding the soldiers near me, knows any details, and that's my wife. This would only ruin my life as everyone would look at me and treat me vastly different. I hide my pain well. I have seen so many wounded and dead bodies the images are ingrained into my brain. I've seen and heard the most disturbing screams from grown men from injuries. These screams still haunt me. I've seen a small children brought into the FOBS hospital missing limbs from IEDs. I've seen a small Afghan child that was hit in the chest with an RPG that did not explode get airlifted into the hospital. She didn't make it. I had a 105mm round land approximately 50 meters behind me on the fob and explode. If it wasn't for those concrete barriers you see on the highway, obviously taller and stacked on top of each other, blocking the blast, I'd be dead. I helped our medics pull a wounded man out of the back of the ambulance at the hospital. He lost both legs and one arm from an incoming mortar round. The tourniquet snapped on his thighs and soaked me from head to toe in blood. I watched soldiers die right in front of me during an ambush. I watched a small boy, couldn't have been older than 13, pick up an AK-47 during this ambush and point it towards myself and a couple soldiers near me. I had to make a split-second decision, that felt like an eternity, on what to do. I hesitated and the boy fired a shot. I almost died. The bullet nicked my shoulder strap on my armor, kept going and landed in my buddy's neck. I instinctively fired back. I immediately realized I killed a child but didn't have time to process it. I had to stop my buddy's neck from bleeding. He bled out while I was applying pressure on the way back to the fob. I never had the proper time to process this until I got back stateside. I know it was in pure self-defense. A him or me situation. And yet this still haunts me to this day because I shot a child. This was 11 years ago now. I'm still suffering. This is the first time I've ever gone into detail about any of this to anyone other than my wife. We've been married for almost nine years, and she never knew the full details until a couple months ago. She just knew the major points as I wasn't ready to talk to her about it. I was in denial. Sometimes I'm still in denial. War is hell. Edited to add, because some people choose to believe this is too much action and not believable, I was working in a major hospital for a good portion of my deployment in Bagram. Bagram was one of the major hospitals where wounded and gear were flown to before being sent to Germany and eventually home to either be treated, WIA, or put to rest, Kia. Edit 2, seems I have to reiterate rule 8 of this subreddit because people can't read. 8, all users are expected to be respectful to other users at all times and conduct their behavior in a civil manner. Personal attacks or comments that insult or demean a specific user or group of users will be removed and regular or egregious violations will result in bans. Do not fight the war within alone. Go to counseling, speak to a professional, go to group support, find and use the resources that are in place. Members of your unit and your wife are a great start, but the more you process these things, the easier it can get. I wish you peace. Life. Is hard. Enough. Alone. Do not. Fight this. On your own. They're called invisible wounds, buddy. You get to the dock to take care of the ones you can see. There's a different dock to go to for the ones you can't see. Edit, I appreciate the awards, but your money would be better spent on a PTSD charity. I don't know if they are any good, but I found these guys, httpspstasa.org maybe give them your money instead of buying silly awards for my post. My brother sexually assaulted me when I was 5 years old, he was 14. He's the golden child, so if I were to leak this secret, I would probably be disowned by my whole family. Edit, thought I would add some info as I'm getting a lot of questions, but first, please stop sending messages asking for personal information or the specifics of what he did to me. It's weird and creepy. 1. I don't know if he was sexually assaulted. 
2. He doesn't have children and doesn't plan to. 3. My family is definitely dysfunctional, but I love them, and it's not easy for me to just drop them. 4. I have told members of my family, but it has been brushed off by everyone I've told. 5. I'm pretty sure he could sue me for defamation if I publicly outed this information with no proof. 6. He's the golden child because he is the oldest and most successful out of all of my siblings. Everyone wants to be accepted and loved by him. 7. He's definitely not a friendly and benevolent person. He is an asshole and everyone accepts him that way. People constantly refer to him and say things like, Oh, that, brother, he's such a dick he he. 8. I repressed the memory for a long time, but I grew up with a lot of mental health issues that have gone untreated. 9. I'm in my 2020s now and he is in his 30s. 10. I have no intention of reconciling a relationship with him. He has been completely cut out of my life and is dead to me at this point. Holy shit, this is my life too. My brother is wildly successful, I'm a little bit successful. He gets whatever he wants, I get depression anxiety OCD and extreme suicidal thoughts over the PTSD from being molested by him as a child but not being able to say anything. You, you are me. Edit, I just want to say I've been scrolling through the hundreds if not thousands of comments for hours now. I am extremely thankful to be a part of this app, never would I have ever even imagined I would be feeling warm and better about myself through strangers on the internet. Thank you all for the kind words, awards, and those of you reaching out. You have restored the faith I lost in humanity over the years of struggling. I've also noticed a ton of responses of people with similar stories. I am so so sorry you've had to struggle with this as well. Although I'm still young, 24, I can still say that life does get better. Many of you who also struggle with suicidal thoughts and other mental illnesses, please know that I am here for you. Along with all the others on this thread. If you ever need to vent or even get some advice do not hesitate to reach out. We will get through this, we will continue to fight, and we will progress and help our future generations fight this evil act. Keep your chin up. And DM me if you ever need anything. I'd kick both their asses for you guys if I could.